in this video what we are going to say is about the introduction to data structures so what is data structure a data structure is a way of organizing storing and retrieving the data and perform operations on these data in an efficient way in an efficient way so what do you mean by this so what is data so data may be anything it may be from integer floating point up to a record that is considered a student record a student record may consist of uh, different details for example personal details academic records and then displacement details also if you take personal details it may consist of a roll number which may be a text field then age which may be an integer date of birth which is a date field and so on and if you take academic record then his internal marks and semester exam marks then the credits which he has earned in all the semesters all the same if you take placement what in which company he has placed what is his salary all those things how many offers he has so all these things has to be recorded in a college environment likewise if you take employee details what is his his personal details alone then what is his salary details what is his savings income tax details all those things so whatever it is how we are going to store this data in what structure so that is what more important and how we are going to organize this data so for example we may want to store all these things in a database so which database we are going to adopt whether it is an excel sheet or an oracle or a sql server or something else so how we are going to store these data and then the stored data we have to extract information so for example in my class how many students got above 90% this i would like to know so likewise so how you are going to extract data from this a particular data according to the uh, people who asked for that so how we are going to extract data and how we are going to perform operation whether updation insertion the insertion of a new data deletion of an existing ones uh, the student has passed from 12 to higher education you you can archive archive that data so how what we are going to do on those data in an efficient way so that is for uh, so for that how we are going to, what structure we are going to adopt in order to store these type of data so each data structure has its way of application for example a single dimensional array a single dimensional array it can be used to store homogeneous type of data what do you mean by homogeneous data of the same type if we are going to declare an array of integer means all the data in that will be integer if you are going to declare a floating point array all the values in that will be floating point so likewise a specialized data structures can be used to solve complex search algorithm like hash table etc so with these things we are will be discussing soon in general data types they mainly they broadly they can be divided into two primitive data types and composite data types what is primitive data types composite data types and then abstract data types abstract data types are nothing but functions which we are going to write but without giving any implementation that we will be seeing shortly so first we will see what is primitive and composite primitive data type these are basic data type that directly operate upon machine instructions so they can be directly stored in the memory locations as an individual as an atom so here some of the primitive data types are integers floating point integers are nothing but a whole number without any decimal point floating point are the numbers with the decimal point boolean either a 1 or a 0 or true or false value then character single character then constants constants are nothing but the values it may be a string constant it may be an integer constant it may be a floating point constant whose values remain the same once declared 
to start up the program the values will remain the same throughout the program you will not be able to change the constant value then strings strings are nothing but a combination of character whereas a character is a only a single character a string is nothing but for example if you say welcome welcome consists of the following characters w e l c o m e so totally seven characters all these things together form strings likewise a string consists of a group of characters pointers pointers are nothing but they directly point to the memory location so the data which is stored in the memory locations can be directly manipulated so that is what for pointers composite data types what do you mean by composite data types these are derived from the primary data types so based on the primary data type what we have declared what we have seen in the previous slide based on that you build more structure they are said to be composite data types say for example which you have already known from your previous semester you have studied c++ in that you should have studied this array structure so array is if you have declared x of so if you say x of 5 means uh five which is of type integer means all the values from x0 to x5 will consist of integer so when you say integer which is nothing but the primary data type so based on the primary data type this array has been built a group of an array of integer an array of floating point an array of string likewise we call so these are derived from primary data type list is also similar you can build a list using a pointer which we have seen the previous as a primary composite data type or primary data type or uh, you can form using the array okay then stack queues linked list trees graphs all these data structures we are going to see in the next coming videos but in this what we have what is Uh, these are all also composite data types which are built from the primary data type abstract data type what is an abstract data type an abstract data type is defined in terms of its data items and its related operations rather than by its implementation in this only what operations are to be done is mentioned but not how so you will be given the function and what it will do that's all no implementation no coding nothing is given so why it, it will be given to the uh, so the developer has to by seeing that he can develop his own code under the given function so a status structure is given and what are all the operations that can be done on that particular data structures the functions name will be given without uh, what it what it has to do that depth, that information also will be given but how it will be done the actual technique will not be given it is up to the developer to use a data structure of his own choice and develop the operations mentioned so the implementation is left to the developer as it gives an implementation independent view only it it is called as abstract so in another way an entity can be considered as a black box where users can only see the syntax and semantics of its operations the representation of the data structure is hidden so it does not specify how data will be organized in memory how it is stored in memory what way it is stored in memory. all those things is not defined and what algorithms will be used for implementing those operations will not be given <coughs> basic add operations some of the basic add operations are constructor or destructor where you create or delete a new instance of an add object and then transformer it changes the state of one or more of the data values of an instance what do you mean by that for example we create an instance we may want to do some modifications on that that can be done using this transformer observer it doesn't do any modification but it just print a value so whatever is there that will be observed so it is called observer 
then iterator it allows us to process all the components in a data structure sequentially which means if i am going to print the values which are stored in a linked list then i will be going for a iterator what is an iterator it may be depending upon the particular language it is a for loop or a do loop or a while loop and then in an iteration we will process so for example i want to uh, print all the values in a particular uh, set of objects then iterate then extract one by one instance and see what is stored in that so how you can do that is through iterator only